fourth quarter in these finals. What is your assessment of his play in the fourth quarter? And what do you think he can tweak in order to be more efficient in those last 12 minutes tomorrow? I would say uh, we evaluate him on, you know, not only scoring, but uh, how he's playing in general. And so um, from a scoring standpoint at times, this whole series, uh, not, not only fourth quarter, he's missed some things that he usually makes. So, but we do want him to be aggressive and find that balance as he's done all year. And so uh, with Golden State specifically, they are trying to take him out at, at certain times of the game. Um, but it's on him to read that and us to put him in positions where understanding he's going to be doubled and be the bait at times and get everybody else involved. And then we have to make him pay as far as that. So um, I wouldn't say his fourth is at not as good or as bad as some of the other quarters. I mean, he's had some stretches where he missed. You know, game one stands out, some open shots throughout the game. And so, um, you know, we want to be aggressive and make the right read, which he's done all year against all the coverages he's, he's, that he's seen. On your right, Mark. Mark Murphy, Boston Herald, EMA. Um, all of you seem to especially get caught up in relations with the referees in the last game. Do you feel you have to tamp that down a bit? Yeah, I would say so. I think uh, in general, just too many conversations being, being had at times. Uh, feels like um, after foul calls or dead balls, free throws, timeouts, there's somebody talking to a ref. And so um, something we emphasized obviously early in the season had, and had gotten away from quite a bit. And so, um, you know, something we got to spend our energy on the game and uh, everything else going in between it other than the referees. So uh, an area we can be better at for sure. Gary on the right. Uh, Gary Washington, Boston Globe. Uh, two questions he made. One, the incident or the situation where, where Draymond didn't want to let Jason shoot after the whistle and came to your bench. Does Jason have to be more pissed about that? Like, is, I mean, that's not in his nature to be the vocal guy, but he seemed to be, he kind of downplayed it after the game. Does he have, does that kind of stuff have to drive him and, and upset him a little bit more? Would you like to see that out of him? Like just a, a pissed off Jason? Well, I would say that what I said after, uh, I think game two, you know, guys are gonna be who they are and handle it however they feel best way to handle it and some people like like I said get into it and some ignore it and so uh, to each his own as far as that um, you know for us it's it's a weird one where um, you know someone follows your players to the bench and the referees say that's not in, inciting anything or instigating anything but you know, so whatever as far as that and like I said uh, guys handle it differently and um, if you use it or don't it doesn't bother me at all. Jay up front. What do you think are the, the most important reasons that you guys have had some difficulty finishing at the rim and producing points at the, in the paint this series? I would say not strong finishes. Uh, some of our drives haven't been as physical as other times, and that's the emphasis with us. Uh, you know, I've mentioned hunting and looking for fouls instead of going up to finish. Um, their rotations are pretty um, pretty direct every time the guy's going to be there. So he's just about making the read. And so, you know, credit to Green and what he did, some keeping guys off balance, faking and falling back and taking away some lobs. But uh, for us, it's really uh, the physicality of our finishes. I think we've been off balance, uh, not going up the strongest. And, and, miss, and point blank, we, we miss them that we usually would make. But uh, because we know where they're going to be with their rotations, it's a mix of getting to the basket and finishing and finding your, your shooters or guys in the slots. And so, um, We've seen that all series. Guys do it in a different way with shot blockers versus full team rotations. Uh, but for us, it's really about the physicality of our finishes. I think we've been off balance and not going up as strong as we need to at times. Over here on this side. Uh, Steve Ashburn here, NBA.com. When you've got a high caliber defense trying to turn you over every possession, what are the two or three, two or three most important things that you guys need to do to keep those to a minimum? Uh, uh, not over penetrate. Is, is one, you know, one or two dribbles, too many can get you in trouble. Uh, like I said, there, it doesn't matter if it's Jason, Jalen, Derek, Peyton, uh, the, the, the rotations are there regardless of who goes to the basket. And so uh, spacing is a big part of it, knowing where your outlets are at, um, not over penetrating. And then, you know, the physicality, that I talk, like I talked about, being strong with the ball. And so those are all things we emphasize, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty set. They're going to be there every time. The low man's going to come across. They're going to crack back, and then a guy playing the backside. And so 
for us, uh, spacing is huge, getting our guys to the spots where we know our outlets are at and being strong with the ball and making the right read. And so, um, you know, a big part of that is physicality with the ball because they are a team that reaches and has really good hands. Again, the second row. Just going back to the like late game unraveling um, in game five, how much do you think it was like the officiating, the officials getting into your guys' head? And what have you learned from that experience that might help you in game six here? I wouldn't say anything specific to do late game with the officiating. I mean, it's a physical series, and um, you know, to Gary's point, I think it, it's we're complaining at times too much throughout the game. So late game may not, you know, be any different than first, second, or third quarter. Something we need to block out and be better at overall. But um, the thing you can take away is we got a little stagnant again, as opposed to what got us back in the game, which was drive and kick, uh, had them kind of flying around in the third quarter. But, you know, a 10 0 run to start the quarter and what got us the lead. And so uh, from there, like I said, it could be a fatigue thing. And, and we'd like to get those guys a little bit more rest and, and have some fresh bodies coming off the bench to keep them fresh at the end of the game. And so you look at all those things as far as rotations and lineups and, uh, you know, the refereeing. I don't know if that impacted anything late game as much as throughout or any different. Front right. Hey, man. Um, two questions for you. First, uh, Rob Williams has only taken, I think, 18 attempts of shots in this series. With reads and things like that down low, he's finishing very well, obviously. Is that a situation where you guys need to look for him more down low for those spots, or are they doing a good job to kind of challenging and also covering him on that spot? And then on top of that, um, just adjustment-wise for you going into game six, is it just when you're talking with your staff right now, is it just a matter of doing what you guys do better, or are you looking potentially at tweaks, lineup changes, anything like that at this point? Yeah, regarding Rob, I think uh, it is a reads, and like I said, their rotations are set. They're, they're a team that's going to come back and, and kind of take the big out there, and but that leaves wide open kickouts there, and, and you've seen that in times this, this series. I mean, obviously, game one stands out in the fourth quarter and the last game of the third where um, you know they're taking away the driver or two or three on the ball with Jalen and Jason specifically. Good, good job of getting into Rob. Um, you know, we have some cross matches on the board, so we can get the shot up there. But the kickouts are maybe more wide open than the drop-offs in this series because they are really good with their rotations. Uh, you know, we're the number one, number two defense in the league, and they're number five half court. We were number one this year. And so it's not a fluke when you go through a season and they're all connected like that. So they do a good job as far as that. Second question, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we've talked about it and looked at, um, you know, some of the counters they're trying to make with the guys we bring in. I think small ball has worked well for us. And, you know, we obviously like to get a little more out of uh, Peyton and, and Derek than we did in, in the last game. But Grant's been a big part of what we've done as well this year. So um, we know what they're trying to do as far as who they're bringing in when we substitute. And we can combat that with some lineup changes that we're looking at. Yeah, Clay Thompson hit four pretty big threes in the second half. Uh, and generally, he seems to be getting more of an offensive rhythm in this series. Do you feel like it's just him hitting shots, or do you feel like you guys are losing him more than you should? Well, we, we don't feel we were as good as we had been the first few games in the other areas. Uh, obviously, Curry got a ton of the credit for the shots he was making early. Felt our physicality and uh, you know some of the adjustments we made on him were better. But... We don't want to lose sight of everything else we've done well, which is the off-ball actions, uh, you know, whether it slips to the basket or, or Thompson. You saw our first two or three possessions. Uh, we, they had slips for layups to the basket. So something we had taken care of well throughout the series as well as getting to Thompson. I think we lost them, lost the rope a little bit there. And for them to have 50 points in the paint is too many in a lot of, you know, non-penetration points. It's off those slips and cuts to the basket. And so... Uh, as much as we want to you know, work, focus on Curry, uh, we still have to do those things well. And with all that being said, they score 104. And so if we clean up a few of those mistakes, especially early on at the start of the game, uh, we'd be in much better shape. Joe? You made a little bit more on the potential lineup changes. You know, I asked you the other day about the Otto Porter move with Looney, and you explained pretty well why you thought the Warriors might do that. Um, so with that same explanation, do you now need to consider moving, I guess, Robert, just so you can, so he can be out there when, when Looney's out there? Yeah, we've, we've even in going back to the last series, uh, coming off the injury, we've run them sh shorter stints. And so we take them out pretty early in the game anyway, and we can come back and match them with Looney, uh, no problem. I think, obviously, the spacing, they wanted to uh, have him guarding somebody more space-oriented. 
And for us, uh, other than last game, we really hadn't got off to a poor start. So uh, no matter what they did lineup wise, we were good to start the game uh, for the most part in the first four games. And so as far as that, we're, we're rotating Rob out pretty quick to get him back in anyway. So that's not something we're looking at as far as changing the start lineup. It's more so uh, who we want coming in for who uh, with the second unit.